Bexhill seems to be a pleasant little town. Bexhill is a pretty little seaside resort with elegant architecture, although personally I prefer more modern buildings. How do you do, gentlemen? Chief Inspector? I fear your admirer has struck again, Poirot. We haven't yet identified the victim, but it's a young woman, 20 to 25 years old. Death occurred last night between half past 11 and 1 o'clock, and we found an ABC guide on the body. Was she pretty? Come on, Poirot, that's rather out of place. It has no bearing on the murder. Are you certain? For women, it is often the most important thing. It often decides their destiny. The body hasn't been moved. You can see for yourself. Has the press been informed? Not yet, but I'm planning to. I haven't yet informed them about the presence of the ABC guide in Andover. Nobody has reported a young woman missing. Not for the moment. No witnesses, I imagine. Indeed. We've asked everybody who may have met a young woman fitting her description last night to come and see us, but I have little hope of gaining anything from it. It's early days, Chief Inspector, and the news may not have spread around the town yet. I hope you're right, Hastings. Hastings appears to be ill at ease. He appeared to be relatively indifferent to Mrs. Asher's murder but a young woman's murder seems to be troubling him greatly. A braided silk belt. It may have belonged to the victim. The guide is open at the page for the Bexhill train times. This key is too small to be one for a house. Without a doubt, it is for a padlock. The young woman wasn't wearing shoes or a coat and was not carrying a bag. That's strange. Either the murderer stole her belongings, or she put them somewhere safe. Maybe so that she could bath. These marks have been left by a rope or a breaded cloth. She was a great beauty. Strange that chap didn't notice it. Apart from the marks on her neck, there are no signs of the struggle. She didn't manage to hit her assailant. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. Child must have been strangled with his bread belt. Unfortunately, in view of the fabric, it is unlikely that we will find any prints. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work.
The medical officer should confirm that the victim was strangled with her own belt. That's what I thought. She shows the usual signs of strangulation. With a little luck, we'll find prints this time. You are too optimistic, Hastings. Our killer is far too meticulous for that. Hastings appears to be ill at ease. The number is upside down. This is definitely at number six. A dual locking padlock. I need to find the code and then insert a key. Firstly, I have to enter the padlock's code. It definitely was here that the victim left her belongings. The purse is full. Yet again, we can dismiss theft as the motives for the murder. Here is the watch she must have removed to prevent it from getting wet. A top brand lipstick. She liked to take care of her appearance. As well as a photo of the victim with some company. It could be useful to me. Betty's first day at work. Mom is very proud of you. Elizabeth Barnard, 7 August 1931. So, the young lady did have a name starting with B, and she worked as a ginger cat, an establishment that must be slightly further along the beach. Jap has gone to the police. The victim has been identified and her family had reported her disappearance. She was called... Elizabeth Barnard, mainly Betty. She worked as a ginger cat at the cafe slightly further along the beach. But Poirot, how on earth? Never mind. Do you have her address? Yes, she lived with her parents on the street leading to the beach, number 22. Shall we go? You are far too impatient, Hastings. Let the poor people take in the news first. Let us go and visit the cafe where Betty worked.
This hut is locked. I fear that this case is far from being solved. Come on, Poirot. You'll find the killer. Certes. But how many times will he kill before I do? I'll be with you in a minute, gentlemen. Something tells me that she is the owner of the ginger cat. This woman must be the owner of the ginger cat. It looks like something is bothering her. How can I help you? A hot chocolate and a tea for my friend, please. I'll bring it straight away. I need to know the time range during which Betty was working on her own. Where is Betty? Betty worked from 11 a.m. to 7.30 p.m. Would she have been alone at any time during her service? Betty worked from 11 a.m. to 7 This page won't help me. No, this person is not the last one to have worked with Betty. No, this person is not the last one. This person is not the last one to have worked. Interesting. Betty was alone between 5 p.m. and 7.30 p.m. Who did she serve? These are the different waiting staff's bills. Which ones were written by Betty? Most probably a single man, a whiskey lover, maybe the murderer? This bill may have been written by Betty. There is probably another one. No. Something's not right. Betty was alone at just one of these two times. Most probably a single man. This bill may have been written by Betty.
most probably a family. Betty served a family and a man on his own, a whiskey drinker. Maybe the murderer. This information will help me to progress. What? Gentlemen, what are you doing? We are searching for clues, mademoiselle. My name is Hercule Poirot. I am a detective, and this is Captain Hastings. Does Betty Barnard work here? That is correct. She should have been here a while ago. Punctuality is the first rule of politeness. I fear that Miss Barnard will not be coming today. She has just been found, dead, on the beach a few hundred meters from the cafe. How awful. Poor young thing. What happened? She appears to have been murdered. This is most distressing. How this will affect my business, I shudder to think. What can you tell us about Miss Barnard? Nothing, absolutely nothing. Miss Barnard was my employee, her private life was none of my business. You did know at least that she had a young man. Indeed. This photo was found. Is this him? Yes, that's him all right. But I haven't seen him for some time. Do you think there may have been some problems between them? I'm not on those sort of terms with my staff. Now, please excuse me, I have work to do. The customer who ordered the whiskey might provide us more information. He may have been the last one to see Betty alive. It is an interesting idea, Hastings. Maybe he is a regular guest. What do you think, mademoiselle? I don't think so. Our regular guests tend to order tea and cakes. At this time of the year, there are a lot of tourists about you never see again. That's what I thought. Time to visit Betty's home. What a pity. I don't have any chance to make it work. How do you do, mademoiselle? My name is Hercule Poirot. I know you. You're that detective we hear all about. I do not know if that is a compliment, but I will take it as one for now. You are Betty's sister, I believe? Yes. My name is Megan. Can we come in? Please do. My parents are at the police station. I doubt they'll be up to speaking to you later. Do not worry. We will not bother them. Did you know your sister's plans for yesterday evening? No. I arrived by train this morning. My parents called me in a panic when they discovered that Betty had disappeared. She went out last night, but she didn't tell them where she was going. What was your last conversation about? Her new dress. 
she wanted a pair of black stockings to go with it. Mother brought her a pair the very day it happened. She was crying. And to think that Betty never even wore them. Poor Mummy. The Barnard appeared to make music a priority in their budget. They're all Miss Modest, but the Barnards are definitely music lovers. What is she feeling at the moment? Mr. Poirot, I don't like being stared at. If you have something to say, would you please say it to me? Betty's older sister is not just sad, she's angry. Your sister had a fiancé, I believe? Yes, he's called Donald Fraser. A very nice man. Was your sister seeing anyone else? My sister wasn't a child, sir. She used to go out. She enjoyed films, dancing. She was a very good girl who didn't hang around with men. That's what they always say, no? The pain is making you bitter, Mademoiselle Barnard. I'm not interested in your compassion, Mr. Poirot. Très bien, Mademoiselle. Could you at least tell me a little about Betty's young man? His name is Donald Fraser, a very nice young man. Oh, excuse me, I have to answer that. But of course. Betty's room is opposite the stairs on the first floor. Feel free to take a look if you think it might be useful. This young woman is far too clever not to have anything else for us. Do you think she's hiding something? That is what I'm trying to find out. Surely you don't think she did it? I did not say anything of the sort. But young women always ruin your judgment, Hastings. Who knows, maybe Megan was jealous of her attractive young sister. I see. She may have had her sights on the inheritance. Or maybe she was in love with Donald Fraser. We have to study all scenarios, even the most unlikely. But I doubt that Mr. and Mrs. Barnard are rich enough to justify murder. While I try and get Miss Barnard to talk, I would like you to try and find Donald Fraser. It should be easy to find the estate agents where he works. Bring him to the Ginger Cats. I would like to talk with him before the Chief Inspector finds him. This gramophone is magnificent. It is a one-off, without a doubt.
Looking at all the clothes she took out, Betty must have had a problem deciding what to wear. Maybe she had a date? I have not finished inspecting Betty's bedroom. of new stockings. It looks like Betty has a very busy life. Betty liked luxury and going out. And being as pretty as she was, she probably did not have any problem getting herself invited. A box of new stockings. This small key should be useful to me. I've finished with this subject. Medicine to prevent voice loss. Did Betty have problems with her voice? Something on this clock bothers me. This wooden panel is blocked. I can't open it. This metal disc is stuck. What a strange mechanism. I don't think it serves to turn the hands. The cogs are blocked by these wooden panels. This decoration appears to be firmly fastened. This decoration appears to be firmly fastened. This decoration appears to be firmly fastened. This leg is not well attached. This leg is not well attached. This leg is not well. This wooden panel is blocked. I can't open it. This wooden panel is blocked. This wooden panel is blocked. I can't open it. There, that's better. This metal disc is stuck. This wooden panel is blocked. I 
This wooden panel is blocked. Cogs are blocked by these wooden panels. This metal disc is stuck. This wooden panel is... The cogs are blocked by these wooden panels. A record sleeve with an unwritten title. Betty must have recorded the demo. I'd be interested to hear it. It looks like Betty was also a music lover, the same as her family. Without a doubt, Betty used to sing. Something on this clock bothers me. That's better. Strange. A sheet of paper is blocked in the clock. This wooden panel is blocked. I can't open it.
What a strange mechanism. I don't think it serves to turn the hands. The cogs are blocked by these wooden panels. I definitely need an object to make these cogs turn. I definitely need an object to make... Thank you. 
Hmm, could the screw be slightly loose? Good. It should be possible to open the wooden panel. Look, a key. This could be useful. I definitely need an object to make this Ah, something clicked on the front of the clock This could be useful. Betty, I enjoyed a wonderful evening in your company, and I hope that we will see each other again very soon. D. My dearest Betty, I know that your art is already spoken for, but you are the most beautiful dancer I have ever had the pleasure of meeting, and I am impatient to see you again. Adrian. A record sleeve with an unwritten title. Bet Let us see, what is this cupboard hiding? That doesn't work. I must have forgotten a step. That doesn't work. There is bound to be a clue somewhere. This looks like solfege. There is probably a link with what I saw in the drawer. There is bound to be a clue somewhere.
There is bound to be a clue somewhere. I heard the sound of a mechanism being triggered. Just have to put the record on the gramophone and start it. That doesn't work. I must have forgotten a step. That doesn't work. I must have... Looks like something goes... Sorry, Betty, but it's not wise. The doctor said you should rest your voice. You're such a killjoy sometimes. Betty was such a good singer. It's true. Did she have any problem with her thought? Yes, she had to be careful with her voice. Of course she didn't follow the doctor's advice. If Don didn't insist, she... Well, it's too late for all that now. Family photos and fires. Their home is modest, but the Barnards are definitely music lovers.
It looks like this woman is single, but she has feelings for someone. She is looking so intensely at this photo. But is it really a sister that she is studying in this manner? They made the perfect couple, am I correct? Yes, in a way. She was pretty and he... Well? He's a bright man, with a promising career ahead of him. He would have made Betty a good husband. He was always attentive and generous. Oh, a true gentleman. I hear a note of envy in your voice. You must have heard wrong. Donald appeared to be very much in love with your sister. Yes, he was mad about her. Mad, you say? Being madly in love can often be destructive, and Mr. Fraser was known for being jealous, I believe. No more than average. Men are always slightly possessive, especially when they are with a pretty woman. I am not your enemy, Mademoiselle Bernard. And you are not my friend either, Mr. Poirot, sir. Yes, but your lies are not helping Mr. Fraser, or you for that matter. I know that Fraser was jealous, but I wonder why you feel the need to protect him. Protect him? I hope you're not suggesting... That you are Fraser's accomplice? There is nothing to suggest that, at least not yet. It would appear that your sister's murder is the second in a series that we have to stop as quickly as possible. The first was in Andover, and the same as your sister, the murderer sent me a letter informing me that a crime would be committed in that town. Now can I count on your honesty? Yes, you have my confidence, Mr. Poirot. Don is a quiet and sensitive young man, slightly reserved too, and as is often the case with reserved people, when he flew into a temper he completely lost control. He could be so violent. Betty was frightened. And when was this? The first time was about a year ago, but they rowed more recently. Donald found out that Betty had lied to him. She said she was going out with a girlfriend, but she went out for dinner with a married man. It was an awful scene. She told him that until they were married, she was free to go with whoever she pleased. Donald turned quite pale and started shaking and kept saying one day... One day... Well? He'd commit murder. Do you think that is what happened? No, Mr. Poirot, I don't believe that. You yourself said he may be a recidivist madman. Don loved Betty with all his heart. I can't imagine for one instant that he would hurt her. Very good, Mademoiselle Barnard. Thank you for your help. Fraser is at the Ginger Cat. The police haven't spoken to him, but they want to. Très bien, Hastings. Let's see him now. Au revoir, mademoiselle. My deepest condolences to your parents. Of course, Mr. Poirot. And don't be too hard on Don. He's more fragile than he looks. If you say so. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. Let us now try and get our brain cells to work. <laughs> 